Hello, and welcome to, um, well, Carlin's Worlds. Yeah, that should work. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, sometimes a nomad, a military veteran. I do things differently. There will be tinkering. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. I live off-grid, so there will be some solar, batteries, inverters, and maybe even some wind. It blows. And that's all I can fit into about 30 seconds. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Cool. On with the show already. No matter what I do, I don't have enough room in here for all the stuff I have. Now, obviously one person should be able to live in a school bus just fine. I've just got too much stuff. All right, so deal with that. Last year, I, last winter, I didn't do the conversion because I ended up living in the truck more. I was working in El Paso, it was 100 miles one way from here. Uh, I was basically running out of everything, wearing the truck out, wore the motorcycle out. Just got to the point I just couldn't sustain driving back and forth on the amount of money I was making and keeping tires on things. So, I built a little camper shell, put that on the back of the truck, and slept at work in the parking lot, and then spent the day in town, and then end of the, you know, because I worked in an evening shift, so I'd go to the library and go out to eat, and, you know, Wendy's and Denny's and uh, library, took showers in the gym, you know, that was last winter. How can I make the bus better incrementally? I don't have enough room outside in outside storage to do what I want to do. What I would love to be able to do is take half the stuff out of the bus, do a conversion on that. And basically for me, the conversion is replace windows, do insulation, run wires for proper lighting, run wires for proper plug-ins, because right now I'm still running extension cords and power strips, which is just a mess. It's not an ideal solution. I was just kind of looking, this has been, you know, a couple months, you know, of thinking and wondering and trying to decide what would do. How can I make the most improvement with the least amount of trauma? So it'll always stay out here on the ranch. It'll be just something that I can live in. If I build a better place to live, I'll still use this as an office probably because I like all the windows. You know, it's just kind of fun to have. So odds are I'll never get rid of it. But I've always been reluctant to cut into it in a big way. But one example I was looking at, this is the last of the half of seats. There's this one and the one on the other side. And what they did is they made the back half of the seat so that the kid sitting in seat number one, if the bus slammed on the brakes or hit something, he would come up and bump into this instead of flying forward into the driver or down the stairs on the other side. And I never took that out. And at the time, I don't remember why, because I was under the bus getting dirty. I sure the hell could have right yeah it just never came out so the two of them are still there so for today's project I'm gonna take this out and then all the stuff I've been just laying stuff here like all my riding gear my motorcycle jacket and pants and helmet sit on the driver's seat and I got a few other things that are just sitting there for lack of a better place which is a common theme here heater duct is gonna come out and the one forward of it's gonna come out and then I'm going to take a hard look at what's up there. At the moment, I'm not using any of the bus's electrics at all. I've got my own wires that I ran from outside, from the battery box that's sitting outside, my solar batteries, or my deep cycle batteries. So the solar panels are outside, they feed power into the charge controller, which charges the four deep cycle batteries that are outside. And then from that, I have a big 10 gauge wire that comes in and runs all my stuff in here. The inverter is outside and I run extension cords in. So I'm not tied into any of the bus systems at all. Even if I drove the bus again, there is a lot of the stuff that's in here that I would never use. Like for instance, I don't need the four-way stopping lights. I don't have you know, I don't need the electrical or the, you know the stoplight sign that pops out of the side. Uh, that kind of thing. I just don't need it. I'll never use it. And there is about, you know, like this many switches sitting up here. I'll, I'll get a shot of that later. 
and I'm never going to use any of them. Some of them are dedicated to fans and heaters. Don't need that. You know, if I ever used the bus um, to drive somewhere, I would very likely end up gutting that whole electrical system and then putting my own switches in that I have already. So, you know, none of that really is anything I need. Looking now, what I'm thinking, I've got one set of wires for marker lights that go all the way around, right? That's, you know, what, what the bus had, all the little lights across the top and down the sides. Those would make fantastic camp lights, right? If I never drive it, I could replace the amber with clear lenses, put LED bulbs in them, hit a switch, and I'd have these nice little white glow lights all the way around the bus. So I could, you know, walk around outside and see what I'm, what I'm stepping on. That would be useful. That was something I thought of a year and a half ago. Never did it. Um, the four big lights on the front and the back, the amber and the red, I have seen clear lenses that would fit that. So you can just go buy them, put them up, put some nice white LEDs up there and have some nice glow lights out the front of the back. Porch lights, basically. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, so I could totally find those wires, tap into them, run them to my own switches, and then bypass the rest of the bus system. At the moment, the battery is hooked up. It was hooked up when I moved the bus. I respotted it last year from a lower spot to a higher spot. Uh, so I'll disconnect the battery before I get started, and then I can just you know, sit there with test leads or have a little battery and touch it to different wires and see what turns on and figure out what the wiring map is. Um, dome lights, outside marker lights, that's the only thing I can think of that I would ever need now. I started this a while ago. This area above the windows is a series of panels that comes off and that's all the way down both sides. I think, I don't know for sure yet, this is, okay, this is my wire I added, but this is the main bundle that goes from the front to the back, all right? Uh, marker lights comes off of that. I think these go to the marker lights. No, that might be going, that's a dome light, because that's there to a dome. So I can find the dome wires and pull them back into my switch here, right? Easy enough to do, cut and splice, and off we go. Then I'd have dome lights, you know, instead of, Instead of using my own, which I have some of my own stuff in here already, but I could make use of that. It would be easy enough. And then swap out the bulbs with LEDs and I'd be set, just because LEDs would use less power. Otherwise, I could use them as they are. But that piece I pulled off all the way to the back because I had access to it, and it was just kind of an experiment to see how hard was it to get off and what was actually back there. That did show me a couple of interesting things. Like, for instance, look at how much gap there is in the insulation, what they did, there's a two different size windows that make up the bus, and by by adding short and long windows is how long the bus is, right? So this one I think was 71 passengers, I think is what they called it, so probably 70 kids in the driver. So that's one size. If you had a shorter bus, maybe they'd put in more small windows and less big windows, okay? So where the small or where the big window is, there's a gap. They didn't bother putting in wider insulation. So it's a 24 inch piece of insulation, I think, standard piece. They just pulled it up and through or put it up and then put the skin up. They didn't bother to get a bigger piece. So there's always that gap there. And then where the smaller window is, that piece fits. Yeah, who would know that, right? Uh, this wire, I think, this one, the little black one that goes up, I think there's a switch for the emergency vent. So if somebody opens up the emergency exit, the alarm will go off. All right, so your kids don't escape. Um, but yeah, that's, it just happened that when I put these shelves up, I can't get the access panels off. It, it's overlapping. Also, the windows when the windows were installed originally, they put the windows in first and then they put this access panel over it. And then at some point the bus garage guys replaced windows as they got broken and they didn't bother to take the wiring access panels off. And so some of these windows are over top of the edge and some are underneath, all right? Not a big deal. So when I get to that part of the project, I'm gonna redo the shelf anyway. So I'll have to you know, obviously take everything off, take the shelf down 
and then pull that strip off. And my plan is not to put the strip back on the wiring cover. What I think I want to do is something like a piece of fabric over there with snaps or something like that. So if I wanted to, I can get back in, play with wires, and then cover it up again. That access panel is a real booger to put back on. It's springy, and you got to get everything to line up right. And the ones I've taken off have just been a pain in the butt. So my, my plan is not to put it back on. So there's that one, and then one down the other side. Same story, all the way down. Um, I haven't taken anything off on the other side, but I suspect there's less wires on that side. I think the main bundle is on this side, and then it goes all the way across to pick up all of the lights on the back. I don't think there's any wires down below. I think they put all the wires up high. Haven't got that far yet. So anyway, uh, that was kind of a jump there, but... So today, I'm going to take this piece off, the little black piece right there. I'm going to take this thing off, which might involve crawling underneath. Sometimes, a lot of the bus seats that I took out earlier, I could take them off from the top and the nut would stay there. So if you turn them off fast enough with an impact driver, you might get lucky. And then this end is attached to this angle piece here that goes all the way back. That's something to look for if you do your bus conversion you may be able to attach other things to that and take advantage of it. It's obviously strong enough to hold the seats up. So kind of look for that. I haven't looked to see if it would be a removable. It probably is a removable piece, but I've just always worked around it. All right, uh, last thing just to get it on this clip. And yeah, like I said, there's a bunch of stuff here. This is where everything goes that doesn't have anywhere else to go. Well, one of many places. So down here is the main bus switch panel, right? I only played with that a couple of times. Very few of those work. So there's odds are there's a fuse panel somewhere. There is one down, actually right behind this bag, there's a fuse panel. And there's also a big breakout down below. You can kind of see the wires hanging. It's right up in there. I can't get to it right now. So, Going forward, this will be an open spot that I can do something else with. I'm going to pull this out. Then I'm looking up here. Do I need a steering wheel in my not driving school bus, right? Now, as a former mechanic, I have removed steering wheels and steering columns. It's actually fairly easy. Undo a couple wire bundles couple of bolts and the whole steering column just comes right out. Okay. I may look at this as another laptop station, which would then mean I could free up that one back there and move the laptop up here and just sit in the driver's seat and then have my windshield to look out of. That would open up about 12 feet. How about that, right? So that's, that's kind of the direction I'm looking at is I have to get access to here first. I had to start moving stuff and cleaning things up and then get access to it. And then I'll disconnect the battery and I'll start just pulling wire bundles apart. And, you know, a couple rolls of electrical tape later, we'll have everything safely tied off. And then we'll go from there. And if I take wiring from the dome lights and rewire it to my switch panel, then the bus itself will be electric electrically inactive, basically. There's probably a better word for that, but you get the idea. There's no reason for the bus electrics to be active at all, so I just take the battery out and pull a few circuits over to my wiring, and we just go forward from there. Uh, a while, this is probably last year already, I noticed one time that all the stuff I threw down here, something was pushing the brake pedal down, and I happened to walk around the back of the bus one day, and the brake lights were on. I'm like, oh yeah, right, so that reminds me that's probably on the brake pedal again, so that battery might be dead by now. Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, that should work. Cool. I do things differently. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Thank you so much for watching.